Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I continue to rescue some Kerbals, fulfilling some rescue contracts we picked up. And we will see how that works out with our makeshift sort of airlock here using the Mark 1 lander can and of course the Lynx capsule. And yes, it is an expensive venture but hopefully something that will save us money down the road because we'll have more Kerbals and also make us some money if we are successful. So first of all we have to do this maneuver up here uh, to do a plane change to meet up with our first Kerbal. Valentina's in charge here. Uh, I thought that by picking up these particular contracts I would be able to get some RP2000 videos done sooner uh, because you know these, these are very straightforward things that I don't have to think too much about. Uh, but as it turns out I got completely distracted by stuff in 1.12 basically. Uh, hopefully you've seen some of those videos where I'm experimenting with 1.12 and seeing if things work out there. And uh, maybe we will be porting RP2000 there too and I'll be able to check it out in 1.12 as well. Uh, there shouldn't be any problem with it except I had that problem with EVAs in 1.12 that I don't quite understand. That's the one thing uh, that I worry about. Uh, but other than that, everything else seems to be working all right with the stuff that I have there. Uh, RP2000 should work the same, but we'll see. For now, we are in 1.8.1. Okay, we'll just go over to the meeting point and adjust there. Seems like Tom Pond is the first one we're going for. Maybe it's Dumbles. Maybe it's Dumbles. It looks like we can get Tompon and Dumbles really quickly here. But we really need to try to get somebody higher up. So I don't think that that's the best way to go. We only have seating for three and there's Valentina here. Yeah, it looks like it's Dumbles. Uh, I don't know about our fuel actually. Maybe we should just go for the easy ones first and then improve our capabilities later. I think it might be time for a pad upgrade. We're, we've been limited to 800 tons, which will be an interesting challenge if we continue it. But I'll have to think about that. Okay, trying to meet up with Dumbles. Uh, we're a little bit late here. I'm gonna fire up the auxiliary engines. Those are the backup engines just in case the center one fails. Okay, we finally have an approach after doing quite a lot of extra burns here. Okay, well I think we're gonna get Dumbles to hop on over here. Uh. Not any electric charge though. I guess we're just going to have to hope that Dumbles has enough. Well, there we are. I don't know why they don't start with electric charge. But at least there's EVA propellant. Okay. Down. Grab. And board. Alright, and let's make sure to move Dumbles over. I'll just use ship manifest for that. Okay, so let's just keep it simple so that we make sure we get them back. And we've got somebody right behind us. We've got Tom Pond. So I'm just gonna try and make a simple adjustment to meet up with Tom Pond. I mean, I, I want to get the people higher up, but this is just too easy. I mean, if Tompon's right there, then let's get Tompon. The problem is, uh, you know, we need to save 800 meters per second, but we're also going to dump the 1 meter, I uh, sorry, Mark 1 lander can. So how to balance that out is the question. So I think it's going to cost too much to get out there. I think we should just, we'll play it safe this time. Okay, approaching for pickup number two. Well, the jetpack can easily do 2.2 meters per second, so it's 
I guess this is from the USI thing. It's a otter submersible pod. I've never seen it before. <laughs> and there's probably a good reason why, with it being submersible and everything. How it ended up up here? Well, you know. A scientist, too. I mean, I guess with a submersible pod, that makes sense. Okay, well, Tom Pond is in. So, I think we've got everybody in the right pod. Yep. Okay, letting go of the lander can. Well, I mean, we had about 300 meters per second to spare is what I'd say. Maybe less. And, yeah, with the others all over the place, I don't know how easy it'd be to get to them. We really need to clean up the ones that I've already done. Oh, we need to check on our life support. Uh, there's only four days and 19 hours of food. We're, uh, we're sort of skewing this the wrong way here if we want to get back quickly. We want to skew it this way. We want to make sure our apoapsis is sort of behind the moon if we want to get there quickly. And even then, that's saying five days, so... Well, we might be making use of the extra fuel after all. Okay, well, weirdly, we are using nearly all of our available fuel in order to get to five days, five hours. Now, our water runs out in five days, two hours and 50 minutes. So I'm hoping that they can deal with it for a few hours. The oxygen is fine, but this is a little bit unsavory, but we really can't push it too much more than this. Um, I'll dump some waste and wastewater. <laughs> no, that didn't do a whole lot. Okay, well, this is... We might have to reevaluate this sort of mission. Most of the burn is actually inclination, which is bad. That probably it'd be better off if we didn't do it around the moon. But I couldn't quite figure out exactly what we should do around Earth to expedite it if we waste too much time. Okay, here we go. But yeah, it's pretty clear that we need a much more capable spacecraft. And that means a much more capable launcher since we're using the best possible engines right now, I think. Okay, we'll do the rest of our CS. Very tight on the Delta V, but it looks like we'll only just be running out of water when we get there. Five hours, uh, f uh, five days, three hours right now, and we run out of water in, let me just double check, five days, one hour. So, not too long without the water. I'm gonna go for 60 kilometers, and we are departing the moon. There goes the moon. And as the moon recedes away, trying to find the Earth. There's Earth. Yes, food is running out. Food will run out first. And we just have to hope that they can survive that one. Well, one are not quite depleted, but yeah, we're close. Okay, now water is depleted. Okay, separating the trunk. And here we go. Maybe we should do a wastewater dump and waste dump. Well, wastewater dump at least. Don't need that. And we're encountering heat. Alright, I think we're coming straight down. So, yeah, no bounce up here. No, oh, we've got sort of a mesa there. Is this flying over Earth's water? This doesn't look like Earth's water. Right? <laughs> Where are we? Well, we're definitely over water. We're over the Pacific Ocean. I guess we're looking straight into the bottom of the Pacific Ocean? I don't know why we're seeing land all over the place. It's all very confusing.
Okay, arrow cap separation. That worked well. Okay, we have parachutes. Uh, I, I think it's showing us the bottom. I don't know why the bottom has to be this complicated, but... And why no water is actually visible. Exceptionally clear water in this part of the Pacific Ocean. I don't know. Okay, shouldn't have been a 4x there. Alright, but we're safe-ish. I'm gonna just do a normal recovery this time. We're gonna build a new one. It's about time. So we'll get the money. Or not. It didn't let me. Normal recovery? Oh. Is it doing something? Ah, okay. Uh, well, let's hope. Alright, so parts, we should have gotten the part money back, the 73,000. I don't know which is worth it more, but anyway, we got the three Kerbals back, well, and the two rescuees in particular, and Dunbulls and Tom Pond are in, we've got four more to do, but clearly we need to reconsider this one that we're building, so let's take a look. We at least need more supplies, but we need to squeeze some more Delta V out of it if possible. Okay, so right now we are using methane boosters and maybe what we can do to squeeze a little bit more performance out of this while staying under the 800 ton limit is to use the hydrogen engines that we have here even though they're much more expensive. I've also got another configuration for the hydrogen engines but we'll leave that be for now. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's switch it up a little bit and see what we get. Well, obviously we're going to need bigger boosters because it is hydrogen. I can just straight up increase the utilization of this in order to get some extra delta V. That would be good. Let's see about that. Um, this doesn't need to carry any food, water, and oxygen. It's just acting as an airlock. We probably lost that when we dumped it. I forgot to transfer it over. That was probably part of the problem. So instead of having it in there, we are going to just have it in the pod in the first place. Well, that should be more than enough right there. Okay, well, we'll take that. So now under 800 tons, and we gotta save this version and save edits with the extra food, water, and oxygen. I don't know if it's going to help enough or not as far as the further rescues, but we'll see. Electronics is going to unlock in eight days. Maybe we can incorporate something from that. I don't know. Um, this, this was mainly for the better communications, but that's not necessary for the moon. I think we, I mean, we had a little bit of blackout stuff, but not a huge deal. So we're probably all right on that. So I won't modify it any further based on that. But, uh, and we don't have enough money for the pad upgrade. We need two million. So we continue to need to save up for that. Okay, let's finish this and get it underway for the remainder of the rescues. Well, we'll probably just pick up two. We'll do two at a time. Hopefully we can get two, but now we've got the tougher ones. Well, while this is on its way, we'll build another one. I should have been doing that for the 212 days that this one was built. We could have slotted into the second build slot. I don't know though, we might be... Well, we need 2 million to get the pad upgrade, so we're probably just going to use another one of these. This is about as good as it's going to get. Okay, so another one. And each of these contracts pays... I mean, maybe just barely enough to pay for the mission. <laughs> Maybe one person. Valentina didn't get anything more from that because I guess going into orbit around the moon doesn't do anything beyond one star. So, well, Dunbulls is a veteran as far as being stranded around the moon is concerned, so maybe we'll send Dunbulls. Okay, and yeah, uh, since. We probably, just in terms of getting into the various different orbits, 
can't actually pick up more than two anyway. We might as well send a Kerbal along. And we have the leftover waste and wastewater from the last time this pod was used. Let's just dump that right now. Okay, and with that all clear, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Six hydrogen engines now. And up we go. And that is the setting from the previous time. <laughs> I know I don't want to roll. Okay. All right, we are past the sound barrier. Well, clearly more than necessary going on with this stage. Okay, booster set. And off they go. Okay, core separation. And ignition of the upper stage. And they both look good. Uh, launch escape system jettison. Alright. And that's clear. Okay, and shut down. 220 by 186. And we've got just the right amount to transfer the pod over. So, yep. We are going to make our transfer burn. I think they were all going prograde around the moon. Okay, gosh. Alright, uh, you know what? Before we make the transfer, I'm gonna clear up those pods. Let me go to the tracking station. We have to be careful not to clear up any, by any pod with a person in it. Tantop, Tomford, Fabian, and Melny. Okay. There's still other satellites around the moon, though. They're gonna get in our way. We could probably filter them out, though. Okay, well, let's do the filtering thing. We're gonna relays. There's nobody else in low orbit. They're all in high orbit. There's Tantop there, Fabian, Tomford, and Melanie. Maybe going for Melanie first would not be a bad idea. Let's see. Okay, Melanie is going retrograde though. And is anybody else going retrograde? No. Okay, Melanie's last. <laughs> Cancel that. Melanie's last. Um, Fabian might be okay okay we'll we'll try to get fabian first we've got a mid-course adjustment that might help and we've got this burn here which should be doable with this stage let us proceed okay we're a little bit late but let's just fire Okay, sun's out, and shut down. Alright. Just a little bit of touch up here. Probably when we separate off, we'll have more impulse than that, but we'll figure that out on mid-course adjustment anyway. That seems differently, uh, that seems different than we plotted. So... Okay, right. Now, transposition and docking. Hopefully I get this right. Oh, we should get the antennae out on this. That did help last time. Okay. Come back over here. Okay, we've got it. All right, so that's connected, and well, we might have still a little bit of delta V from that, so I'll shut down this, and we'll make sure it's controlling from there, and we'll try and make use of the tiny bit of delta V we have here. Maybe that'll help us out. It's also got RCS fuel, so... Okay, for now we'll take that. Nine days and nine hours seems like a long time though. 
But with that high orbit that Fabian is in, I don't think we have any choice. The RCS on here should be able to do this uh, particular node mid-course adjustment. So we will use the RCS on the stage for that. And then I actually share why the thrusters on this bit aren't firing to help out. It's alright, but I just don't understand why they aren't. Because they're activated and they have the fuel. Obviously we did a transposition and docking so they're functional. Just don't know why they aren't helping out. Okay, that correction is done. Okay, go away. Stop, stop. This isn't going away. It isn't letting me get rid of that maneuver. We, what, we hit it too perfectly or something? Okay, here, here we can get rid of it. All right, well, that's fine. Okay, so we have a safe periapsis. Make sure that happens. Well, this is a bit complicated, but we'll go with what we've got for now. All right, on to the moon. And controlling from let's see that docking port. Okay. Push away. Activate this engine again. Alright, 2321 is what we have. And given last time, let's reserve at least a thousand to get back home. So a thousand three hundred is what we're working with. Okay. And ignition. And there goes that stage. Okay, and that's a shutdown. Should have been done perfectly. And we will just proceed with the next one. Well, it looks like we've got a gap there, so let's adjust the next one. Very, very high. Okay, go. still have some relative inclination, it's just that the ascending or descending nodes are in the right place. Okay, we'll deal with 25 kilometers and a relative velocity of 124 meters per second. Time to close approach 3 days 13 hours, so good thing we packed all the extra food and water and oxygen. Okay. Initial rendezvous burn here. Okay, we have encountered Fabian's wreckage. We are in this uh, not sphere influence, the render range. Up oh, there's Fabian. Oh no! It says Fabian Kerman died of oxygen deprivation. Why? What? No! No! We didn't take that long in in the in the area. You can check the clock. We did not take that long. Oh my, what has that done to it? Well, uh, it doesn't look like it's killed our budget. Uh, let's just verify. Okay, Dumbles, you're gonna have to hang out here for a sec. We took a lot of effort to get to Fabian. And we did not hang out. We just got into the SOI and... Uh, not the SOI, the render range, and we were going right in. It wasn't taking that long at all. Failed. Uh, the failure only costs us 73,007... 10 and some reputation but not a whole lot of reputation um so we be basically lose the advance here but of course we were expecting to complete that properly and you know the mission cost us more than just the advance so this is this is rough We'll try to get to another Kerbal, but I think uh, I'll I'll close it here for now at this disappointment. This is this is serious. Uh, I don't know what what if we go to another Kerbal and the Kerbal dies immediately too. Hmm. Take some pondering. Anyway, with this unfortunate situation, 
Uh, I'll wrap it up and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.